Well, thank you very much, uh, Gary. Um, first up, I need to acknowledge the members of the SAIMM. To be honoured by the members of, is the ultimate recognition for someone that has chosen mining uh, as their career. And while we touch all aspects of society in mining, um, our endeavour, the work we do, uh, all very important, but to have recognition from one's industry peers is really something to be cherished for someone like myself that's been in the industry for 46 years. I also need to thank uh, the SAIMM president, Ms. Isabel, Ms. Isabel Gildenhaus, uh, for her gracious note, and Ms. San Muller for her guidance through the process. I'd also like to say congratulations to Michael Solomon for his recognition. Uh, it really is an honour for me to be on the same ticket as Michael, and uh, Michael has been to the industry for many years and certainly someone that I would hope to continue to work with uh, in my new roles or many roles that I, I'm hoping to get involved in, uh, in particularly in support of our industry. So as my children like to recognize or, or certainly remind me on a regular basis, I'm an old man compared to the one that started uh, in the industry so many years ago. And I guess almost 46 years in mining does give them a solid data point to support that view. However, it feels like I only joined the industry a very short while ago. As a young boy, straight out of high school, I was very lucky to have worked in almost every part of the business at Colcliffe Colliery near Wollongong, including time as a production miner, a union member, uh, and then frontline supervisor. These were the days when you saw uh, and could measure the fruits of your labor or otherwise each and every day. However, as a chief executive, we measure success or otherwise in terms of 10 to 20 years. And while I would love to regale you with memories from many years in mines, traveling the world and meeting so many interesting people, uh, I think my reflections need to focus today on my most treasured memories of South Africa. And to not put too fine a point on it, since September 20, 2007, the most important country in my life, both personally and through my profession, has been South Africa. In 2007, it is reasonably argued uh, that the three most important issues confronting our country and our industry were safety and health. And I mean that in the broader sense of the welfare of all workers and the broader, broader citizenry. Transformation and the need to give all South Africans an equal opportunity to individually determine the course of their personal and professional development. And the third point, productivity, that being the necessary precursor to lifting a country out of poverty and its associated inequalities. And I do remember someone once said, in the short term, productivity is not the most important issue. But in the long term, in terms of progress and, and developing and improving society, it's the only measure. And so making sure we've got that in frame, along with our other priorities, is always very important. And the potential role of mining in helping us as a, a nation navigate broad social challenges, I don't think was fully recognised in, in South Africa at that time. I guess the obvious question follows today is, is it? recognised today. And I'll deal with that question uh, as I talk to what I think we've got to do going forward. In defining progress on those three fronts that I talked about, if I could focus on Anglo-Americans' journey, I think in some ways it's a surrogate for what we've done as an industry because we've all helped each other. And while at the same time recognising our weaknesses and failings, it's really important, I think, to celebrate the positives and the things that we've achieved together and to make sure that we've got the things that we need to improve going forward clearly in front. On safety, from more than 70 reported fatal incidents in 2007, Anglo-American reported one fatal event in 2021. With our first zero deaths, that is no deaths in South Africa in the same year. Reported deaths from HIV and associated illnesses went from 1,000 in 2007 to one reported loss in 2021. And in 2021, losses due to tuberculosis was zero from 70 
in 2007. And while we still didn't achieve our zero harm target, there is no doubt our progress on the journey towards zero harm has been remarkable and certainly, I think, global industry leading. And I believe the South African industry progress on all of those fronts has been just as remarkable. I can only hope the foundations that we set at Anglo help the team achieve that noble objective soonest. And I think it's really important to recognise Duncan Wanblad's comment. He said, getting to zero is the biggest challenge, but staying at zero is an even bigger challenge. I think he said that absolutely right. On transformation, which is deep and diverse, let me share a few names that most of you will know. Nolita Fukude, Natasha Villian, Temba Makwanazi, Mpumi Zikalala, July now leading Tungela, Moses Madondo, Norman Mbazima, and Terence Goodlace. Men, women, black, white, and even a Liverpool supporter in the mix, reflecting a new and exciting transformed leadership for Anglo-American, dealing with modern challenges that define where opportunities start. And people also forget about the companies we have supported in the early evolution that are now African champions, African Rainbow Minerals, Harmony, Exaro, Seriti, Tungela, the list is broad and deep. We are proud of the progress we made in our time, but we also know it's still a long road that must be traveled. And from our point of view, we wish those that have followed us, well, and from my point of view, that's Duncan Wanblatt. On productivity, delivering more than 100% increase in production through the implementation of new operating models, new technologies, and now shining a light on a pathway for new renewable energy strategies and carbon reduction delivery have all been very much part of the Anglo-American story over the last few years. Again, not as good as it could be, but again, 100% improvement in productivity. That's production per person is material progress towards where we need to be, but it does need to continue to improve, as does productivity across the nation. If we're going to lift ourselves to where we should be, then productivity has to become the most important word after safety, environment, and social in our lexicon. And taking the theme of innovation, can you now believe it? The major global equipment manufacturers in the mining industry are shaking their heads at how a group of mining clunk merchants and a few jet propulsion technology geeks built the world's largest hydrogen battery truck in less time than it took GM and Elon Musk to deliver their first Tesla prototype. And please don't let my description of my wonderful former colleagues um, undermine the, understand, the understanding of their achievement. And it is remarkable. Led by Tony O'Neill, Donovan Waller and Julian Souls, what they and the team have done is quite remarkable. These are all achievements that have been born of the South African mining industry and Anglo-American being part of that industry. We are here in these conversations, not in spite of being proudly South African in terms of heritage and commitment, but because of our roots and our long-term commitment to making a difference. And so for me, it's not about what I've done for South Africa, it's about how you have inspired me, you have inspired our leadership team and all of my Anglo-American colleagues to make a difference that goes beyond the simple accounting of production and financial returns. I was lucky and I count myself to be very lucky to be part of and the leader of a great team. And it was a team and I'm talking about Anglo-American, I'm talking about South Africa and the work we do as an industry together. In looking forward, I believe South Africa's greatest challenge is to stare down corruption and stand for a future that is honest, open, and committed to equal opportunity and just reward for entrepreneurship, innovation, and hard work. The mining industry must be a champion for these ideals and principles. And I think we can hold our head up high and point to many great examples where we've made a difference. Unlike most, we have the resources and we have the champions to lead and play our part in society. Consistent with these themes, we need to see proper resourcing and consolidation of activities to support the application of government processes and approvals that are effective and efficient. That is effective in that they deliver on what they are designed to solve 
and efficient in making sure we use the right resources to get them done quickly and without duplication and rework. We acknowledge the government's efforts in these areas most recently and its recent moves on energy being particularly encouraging. But we need interventions at scale and across the breadth of government functions. And we do applaud the work that uh, the president and his ministers are putting in place, but it does need to speed up. It needs to be broader and deeper. And we have a responsibility to play our part and be part of the process in that regard. At the same time, we must be responsible in our demeanour and we must speak responsibly in all of our public conversations to both support our nation's interests and constructive debate around policy and future directions. And we must all roll up our sleeves and become part of the solution. We cannot simply be bystanders and then be wise after the event. I've seen in too many countries industry leaders criticising their governments instead of rolling their sleeves up, getting there and helping and really have material debates about policy and how they can be applied and how we as industry can support them make those changes. South Africa has the resources. When you look across industry, government and all of our support structures, we have the talent. We have a government that is open to creating the conditions necessary to help us lead the global mining industry. And we have a government that's not scared to have a debate on policy, as long as it doesn't get personal and doesn't detract from the work and the hard places that we've had to come from as a country. So everyone needs to stand up and put our petty issues aside and provide our country the leadership it needs. And more importantly, the leadership it needs to create a true rainbow nation. It's not simply the role of politicians to lead the country. It's every one of us in business has to play our part. It's time we led the South African mining industry towards, a glo towards global industry leadership, which is where we have to set our sights. To today, I'm wearing my Springboks jersey given to me by Victor Matfield, not because I'm celebrating uh, something in terms of personal connections. It's my celebrating my commitment, or it's me celebrating my commitment to South Africa. I believe it is time we set ourselves a target to bring our own version of the Mining World Cup home to South Africa. And what defines our Mining World Cup? I think first, treating each other with dignity and respect and making sure our public discourse reflects that personal, personal commitment to speak responsibly. Let's provide the personal examples of how we should have public discourse and to make sure that we set the standards for being constructive, and supportive in our conversations and our public conversations. Criticising governments or, or making absolute declarations about what we think of them is not going to help. It has to be about policy and practical solutions. Being the leader in social development and poverty elimination in all of the areas in which we operate is a material contribution we can make as an industry. We are part of those communities. We need to be partners with those communities and we need to do everything we can to uplift and support the development of those communities in which we work. And third, delivering best in class returns to both shareholders and our broader stakeholder networks is absolutely critical to make sure we receive the ongoing shareholder support for investment and development of new opportunities. And to our young and exciting new industry leaders, you have the opportunity to take South Africa to the top of the industry rankings and at the same time lead our country towards the future it needs to deliver on its 1994 promise and promises. But no one's going to hand you that leadership on a plate. You have to earn it, you have to work for it, and you have to take us all forward. Anything less from our industry would simply be a failure of leadership leadership that must be personal and compelling. And that's the responsibility we have as leaders of the industry and leaders in our country. Madam President, in the context of receiving the wonderful award from the SAIMM, I would like to thank all my industry colleagues for inspiring me with their enthusiasm, passion and support to help make a difference. In that same context, I would like to dedicate this award to our young men and women that are building today's mining industry, 
to those with the courage to make a difference in the pursuit of a better South Africa for all. As they say in the classics, it is important to remember and remain focused on what is important and what you're actually fighting for. And for me, that is the future of our children and the future of our country. Thank you.